Hello to the Chicos and the Chicas. If you happen to be on your way to a deserted island and there is only one book you can take with you in order to support your chess knowledge, your chess improvement, what would you take? Well, I'm going to give you a piece of advice. You should take this boy right here, which is Arthur Yusupov's um, Build Up Your Chess. Uh, the Fundamentals, which is actually not one book, but one, two, and three. So we already outsmarted the system. Three books for you, but um, yeah, I'm going to start with uh, the number one of one. Uh, by the way, the whole series is nine books actually, because we have got um, number two, and this one has uh, three books as well, and number three which also has three books. Please, please uh, take note that this is green, but because of the green screen behind me, it cancels out the green and turns it into black. Back to where we started. Build up your chess. This is the real deal, the real kryptonite. There has been a lot of reviews. Uh, there have been a lot of reviews already on the internet, but I wanted to uh, offer my two cents about the book. Um, Start with the introduction because it's a really good one. And that's not very often I in, uh, encourage anyone to read introductions in books, but this one I really, really found useful. First of all, it tells you that the book one, which is the three books, are uh, uh, written for everyone, bit, uh, sorry, under 1500 uh, fee day. Book two is written for under 1800 and book three is written for under 2100. It also tells you how to use the book, which almost all chess books have, but not many nail it as well as this one does. Um, I really, really like the instructions because that sets your mind perfectly well for uh, serious work. It says set up every single position on the board, play through the instructions, the lesson parts, and set up the boards and solve the puzzles on the board without moving the pieces. Also, it tells you to write down the solutions, which is a very big pet peeve of mine as well. And it encourages you to write down every single line so that your thinking and your calculation is thorough and it's actually very precise. Last but not least, it also tells you um, that once you are done with the test parts, play through the solutions, compare it with your ideas. And then again, there is a beautiful learning opportunity for you if you got something wrong or if you omitted a line or two from the variations. So there is that. Now, what makes this book so great? Many things. The first one, which is also, by the way, in the, inter uh, in the preface, is the fact that the material of the book is based on multiple lectures given by the author. So he actually assembled the material whilst offering lectures and actually conducting lectures, receiving feedback, and then fine tuning the material. That's number one. Number two, it is extremely rare to find a good chess book that deals with all major parts of the game, opening, middle game, end game, strategy, positional game, tactics, and so on. And this book does justice to this very ambitious concept to, I wouldn't say perfection, but as close as I have ever seen in a chess book. And boy, that's a big call. So you will find opening concepts, end game concepts, middle game ideas, strategy, and tactics. So this is basically chess as a broad, broad concept. <clears throat> put into one book, or rather three, uh, if I lift all the three of them in here. So that is really, really, really cool. And I think that this is a massively great way to boost your chest, which of course is a bit of a pun because that is also what one of the books are called. Now, also in the preface, still I'm not moving past page two, the book tells you that this is a very ambitious book that tries to fill a gap for those who either can't have a coach or don't have a coach but would like to maximize their learning potential. And indeed, in my opinion, this is a marvelous book to go to for those who don't have a coach. But the book and Yusupov claims that optimally um, coaching and having a coach is the fastest way of chess improvement. But once again, I would like to stress that this is something really, really remarkable 
for those who would like to start out on their own. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples and I'm going to right away mention two things that I would like to mention on the side of uh, not so great. The first one is, is that you buy these three books and um, if you are like me, you don't know where to start because they all have a number one in the corner. Um, one of them would have a circle, another one a triangle and another one a square on the front. I don't know if I am challenged a little bit, but for me the only way to figure out where to start was to look at uh, the year in which uh, the books were published. And then I found out that uh, actually uh, they follow all the same pattern of circle, square, triangle. Um, the other thing that I found that may or may not be mentioned on the negative side and that uh, actually brings up one of my favorite memes which I shall show you right now is um, the fact that so the, le the actually let me show you the the structure of the book which is also sheer genius so every single paragraph starts off let's go back to my full cam first with a lesson mating motifs it shows you the position, it shows you the solution, and there is some analysis and verbal instruction. It follows on the second page, the third page, beautiful examples, explanations, perfect. Da -da 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 -da. Off you go, you finish your lesson, and you get an exam or an exercises section where you actually are required to showcase what you have learned. So this is where you set up your positions, you solve them, you write down the solutions. And once you are done, you check your solutions right here. And really, really cool stuff. I quite like it. Not much really, but still a cool concept that at the very bottom, it even tells you uh, based on your score, how well you did. And that's the point where um, my favorite meme comes in, which I shall show you. Um, again, so sometimes I felt that I've read a chapter and then I went through some of the questions and this meme come to, came into my mind or comes to mind rather that uh, this is me studying for the exam and then the first question comes through the tiny little gap in my absolutely impenetrable shield. So long story short, some of the, the examples are already quite tricky in book one. Now I do think that this is a downside as well as a great thing at the same time, because it teaches you that very important concept that yes, you can learn motifs and ideas and patterns, but almost always when they actually pop up on the board, something will be slightly different, sometimes quite different but still the knowledge of these ideas, concepts, patterns will be immensely useful. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples from book one, just so that you get a bit of an idea of uh, what you are facing. So this is actually the very first chapter of the third book of the first series. So we are still under 1500 when we are required to solve this puzzle with why to move. And it is already see, easy to see that um, it's not a kindergarten mate because the generic ideas of going for checks, checks on the H file don't work. And in fact, it's a combination of two motifs that uh, allow us to carry out uh, an easy and lovely win with Bishop F6, two exclamation marks, threatening with Queen H8, check Bishop takes and Rook takes mate. And if Bishop takes F6, then queen h7 check and a new motif and a new idea comes to mind and in fact comes to realization on the chessboard with queen f7 mate which is super easy to overlook if we are tunnel visioning on the h file and the idea of combining that with some sort of uh, an involvement of the dark squared bishop and we overlook the importance of uh, this attacker down here now just to be clear this um, example comes um, from uh, the chapter called Combinations Involving Bishops. And that's a really cryptic title in my opinion, but at the same time a really cool one. So obviously there is a heavy focus on utilizing diagonals and bishops. But if you just go with that title, you would still assume that it has to do something with this bishop. And it's super easy to overlook that... Uh, 
there is another big boy there. One thing I forgot to tell you that I really should highlight is that uh, the puzzles are actually rated. So every single puzzle has stars above them. Oh, I find it difficult to point. Stars from one to three indicating the level of difficulty of each puzzle. Obviously one star being the easiest three stars or occasionally even four being the most difficult. This one here was a one star puzzle. Now I'm going to show you a two star one that I already thought was quite a challenge actually. Uh, in this position with black to move, um, yeah, this is this is not a, a completely super duper easy story um, to figure out. The marvelous solution is bishop c1 check, utilizing indeed the power of the bishops. The first cool motif is, is that if I take the bishop, then the knight becomes pinned, and so I can just take the queen for free, threatening various checkmates. The second idea is, is that uh, if I go to the corner, then actually I now get to take the knight, allowing my queen to be hanging because there is a superb checkmate. And once again, you have to give it to the author. Boy, this is a marvelous demonstration of bishop power. But once again, you do see that already the ideas stack up. It was a marvelous queen second cornering the white king and then a checkmate uh, beautifully combined together. And last but not least, if I go to King A2, here comes yet another superb concept, still relying on bishop power, bishop D5 pinning the queen, and actually after queen takes bishop, we have queen A3 and queen B2 mate. Absolutely amazing stuff. You could argue that it's quite tricky already, and I'm going to not counter to that, it is, but chess is not meant to be an easy game, and so I'm kind of happy that book one already prepares us for what is the real chess life out there looking like and what we need to prepare for. I wanted to show you one last example where um, we do see one of the greatest strengths of the book and that is that throughout the books there are many many chapters that actually even deal with openings from the starting position and analyzes entire games, something that I do think that a lot of club level players and uh, um, beginners need to see how games evolve. How do we get from the starting position to an acceptable middle game to an attacking position to a checkmate? And this is a, a good example. We don't quite get to see the whole opening, but we already do see a very healthy middle game setup. All white pieces are marvelously developed. This is, by the way, a chapter, I believe, called simply Attacking. And uh, Yusupov showcases a beautiful attacking game here, actually played by himself, with f4, ed, ed, opening up files, and already eyeing the concept of opening a diagonal as well. And after queen d8, knight e4, he trades the only good defender. He centralizes. You can see here a lot of awesome chess ideas already um, jammed into one brilliant game. Knight takes, knight takes, bishop f5, and here comes the boomski d5, cracking the diagonal open and uh, creating an absolutely devastating attack. And in this position, black under CV pressure made a terrible blunder by playing bishop a5, a very greedy idea that got punished beautifully by a very thematic and uh, not particularly difficult, but very beautiful queen sack. Queen takes a5, queen takes check, king up, and knight takes e8, double check. And this would be as good a time to resign as any. Now, after king g8, you can actually work out a false mate if you want, um, which goes with knight f6 check, king g7, knight g4 check. And if the king goes back, we have got mate on h6. And also there is a false mate to be had in this variation like so. So that was an absolute beauty. Um, and after king h6, again, there is a marvelous mate, bishop g7, king h5, check, 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 and then the check mate. And so this, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful learning tools where you demonstrate um, a concept like how to attack, 
a king on when it's same side castled, but not from you know the very moment that the queen sack uh, happened, but actually far further back when it's not obvious at all how we are going to get to this king or how we are going to attack. And so he demonstrates you the entire concept from the very early middle game. And once again, you even get to see many, many examples where it's from move one. So long story short, the Yusupov series. Once again, I'm showing you only the orange books now as the beginner section or the under 1500 is an absolute kryptonite of chess learning. It covers all important facets of the game. It tackles openings, middle games and end games from various end ga uh, uh, angles, excuse me, covers all the important topics. And I can't praise this book highly enough. An absolute must on every chess improvers bookshelf. The only downside to the book, other than the fact ones that I mentioned, which are debatable even if they are downsides, is that they are actually not one book. They are three and then another three and then another three. So it's actually nine books, quite a hefty investment. But I really do think that they are worth it. It's definitely a five out of five stars from me. So if you would like to boost your chess, um, go to Mr. Yusupov um, and uh, yeah, invest in this book. It is definitely a remarkably awesome book. By the way, uh, the first book is also available on Chessable, unfortunately not the rest of them. Either case, this is uh, a really, 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 really nice chess book to have. And I have no doubt in my mind that it's going to be indeed boost your chess. Thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to like, to comment, to sub or to super like, and I will be back with my next video very soon. Thanks for watching.